Most single-use plastic products end up along beaches, abandoned lots or landfills, where they pose a serious environmental risk. That's why, after four years of passing legislation to protect the environment, the Department of Environment is finally cracking down on lawbreakers. In 2022, one-time-use plastics and styrofoam products like plates, cups, straws, cutlery and plastic bags were banned from being imported or manufactured. Permits were then only given for products that met the new biodegradable standards of decomposing within a year and being at least 50% of a bio-based component. However, Chief Environmental Officer Anthony Mai says the DOE later found that many of the registered products did not come close to meeting the requirements. What we did is we took 17 companies, 13 importers and 4 manufacturers who went to the warehouse and we collected samples of the brand that they imported and manufacture. And out of the seven, from the 17 companies, we gathered 90 samples and we sent the samples abroad to be tested at an accredited laboratory. We received the results in around maybe the end of 2022. So around mid-2023, we realized that a large amount or a large portion of the products on the shelves really and truly were not biodegradable because the composition of the products were not meeting the 50% by base threshold. The DOE then informed importers of their findings deregistered their products and gave them a timeline to finish their stock. And to ensure it wasn't hoodwinked again, the DOE secured specialized equipment to test products from the United Kingdom. So what the equipment does is it strengthens two aspects of the process. It strengthens the application process and it strengthens the enforcement of the regulations. So now the process is that because the, the brands has been deregistered, the importers, before they want to bring in another product, they will have to provide samples to the DOE. We would get it tested or uh, we were able to get an equipment for the University of Belize so it could get tested at the University of Belize as well. And if the product basically, if the, after the test result comes out, if the product has more than 50% of base content, then we will be able to register the product and allow the product to come into the country. So we have strengthened the application process. The DOE has since trained its staff to use the machine and is now cracking down on business owners and the everyday Joe and says it will conduct random countrywide inspections. The Department of Environment really and truly will begin to enforce the law. So, for example, the law says that no one should import, manufacture, sell, or possess these prohibited products. So, for example, if we go to supermarkets and we see samples, so products that are sold as biodegradable products, and if we take sample and we test it at the equipment that we have or at the equipment at the University of Belize, and if it is not meeting the standards, the owners of the supermarket will be charged for violation of the plastics regulation. So then why the equipment is important because then now we have evidence that we could take to court to prove that the products are not meeting the biodegradable standard. Persons caught breaking the law will be prosecuted and according to Mai, will not be shown any leniency. So you may want to start walking around with a tote bag. I don't think that there is any room for leeway because one, we have met all importers, right? Um, and two, we are putting, the reason why we put out the press release and, and maybe through this interview also, which is, it is a form of informing the general public that you need to be very careful of what you have in your position and um, maybe be sold and manufactured, right? And so, again, I, I don't think that we are at the point now to show leniency. It's now for us to, to show seriousness in terms of how important this initiative is to believe from an environmental standpoint. All in all, Mai says the law was crafted to protect the environment and reduce the use of plastic as microplastics have been found in food and even in human beings. He also underscored that the productive sector will not be affected as long as people follow the rules. There's a provision in the law that exempts plastic, single-use plastic products that are used in the productive sector from coming into the country. So in terms of maybe the plastic that you put the pack right in, those products still could come into the country. They could come in as a restricted product. That means that they need to get their approval from the DOE for a permit to be able to bring. So under the law, it is referred to as a barrier plastic. So, for example, if you look at the, 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 how meat is sold at the supermarket, the meat is sold actually in a styrofoam plate. So that styrofoam plate, even though it's a single-use plastic, even though it's styrofoam, it was not prohibited under the law because then we would have impacted the productive sector significantly. And the law, is not in, the law was not intended to do that, right? It's only to capture those products that we believe there is good alternative or substitute. Vigil Alvarez, Love News.